A Creedmoor man was attacked by a swarm of bees. He's expected to get out of the hospital today. The first responders who saved his life spoke about a daring rescue. Fox 7 Austin's Rudy Koski joins us now in studio with that. Rudy. Hi, Mike. It's pretty amazing what the first responders were able to do. Now, according to data from the CDC, you're more likely to be killed in a car wreck than attacked by an animal or an insect. But the bee attack that recently happened in Creedmoor serves as a warning that the risk of coming across an angry swarm increases this time of year. These are some of the bees involved in the attack last week. Others came from a hive inside a water meter along Turnersville Road in Creedmoor. Bee expert Walter Schumacher was hired to remove them. But these guys are already coming out to, to, to bump into us, to tell us that, that this, is, this is their territory and that this is their hive and we should go away. The swarm apparently was stirred up by a lawnmower. And then that fueled the second beehive to attack, so he got kind of caught in a crossfire, a perfect little storm of bees. At the time, a crew with Travis County ESD 11 was already on an emergency run. Lieutenant Adon Torres says when dispatch diverted them, they knew it had to be bad. That's not something that normally happens. When they arrived, a man was in the middle of the road covered with bees. As soon as we recognize that, it's you grab him, I'll grab the line, let's, let's get him out of here. There was no time to fully gear up. Fireman Greer Hillis only got part of his mask on. I didn't see a lot of the bees. I was really kind of focused on him. But once we had moved him uh, over, you can see bees all on his face. You can see them all inside the collars of his shirt and on his arms. The bees then swarmed Hillis. I know as soon as I picked him up to move him, they landed on my mask and I had zero visibility. I mean, completely covered. Lieutenant Torres only had one option. I could see the swarm grow in size and then land on my firefighter. And I immediately turned the hose over to him in order to get the bees off of him so he could actually move the patient away. They didn't even bat an eye. They just threw the doors open and jumped out and saved this guy. Battalion Chief Jason Pack is amazed how his team reacted. You know, in my 16 years of service, it's probably one of the most selfless acts I've had the pleasure of witnessing. With the bees dispersed, paramedics were finally able to reach the man. They had been kept at bay by the swarm. They brought him into the back of the ambulance and he went into full cardiac arrest. They were able to revive him and save his life. Now this is the time of year that bees are extremely active and there are a couple of things to remember if you ever have an encounter. What a person should do is shield their eyes because honeybees attack from the periphery. They don't attack here. Protecting your eyes, according to Schumacher, keeps you from going down. And don't swat at them because that only agitates the bees. Go to a car door and get in. If there's 10 bees or 20 bees that follow you, they've either already stung you or they're only going to sting you one time. Uh, so, but the 150 to 2,000 that are outside uh, aren't going to be able to get in. The remaining bees at the house will be removed on Thursday. Dangerous job. The firefighters didn't use foam because that can kill them. That's why they just used the water. The firefighters and the paramedics said that they were stung several times during this rescue, but I'm told most didn't realize that they had been hit until after they had transported the victim to the hospital. A mother and her newborn son who were stranded in Austin after a premature birth are back home in Pennsylvania tonight. A dispute with their insurance company prevented mom and her baby from leaving earlier, but pressure from media reports and help from some friends got them the flight they needed. Fox 7 Austin's Rudy Koski, who was the only reporter with them as they left the hospital, has the story. The bags were packed up, and so was the baby. The sight of that Thursday morning provided some long-awaited relief for Sarah Prada. Oh, you have no idea <laughs> how relieved I feel. Prada is from Pennsylvania and arrived in Austin last month on a business trip with her husband, Steve. On April the 14th, in their downtown hotel room, she unexpectedly went into labor. My water broke and I knew instantly that I would be stuck here. The baby was nine weeks premature and taken to St. David's. Once there, it was decided that the baby would be named for the town that he was born in. Not long after this new family picture was taken, Steve and their four-year-old son went back home. 
the month-long separation that followed was not easy. In an effort to be reunited, the family requested the use of an air ambulance. But their insurance company, Aetna, rejected it. They had letters actually came to our house written to Austin and said, your condition doesn't qualify for medical transfer. It was just kind of ridiculous and just very frustrating. Putting the baby on a commercial flight just wasn't a realistic option, according to Rhonda Reed, who heads up St. David's NIC unit. Being premature, he has a um, premature immune system, so he's more susceptible to, to any kind of germs, infections, things like that, and he has had no immunizations. Aetna eventually had a change of heart and paid for the air ambulance, but only after Sarah's company offered to pick up the bill. There was also a lot of pressure from media reports and a Keystone State congressman. It actually made me realize we should have asked for this kind of help earlier. <laughs> That's sort of the lesson that I learned, is that people want to help you when you're in a crisis. They really do. The crisis actually had an unexpected twist to it. This family separation created a family reconnection, and it was just a few steps away. The woman that Sarah is embracing is Casey Slusher, a long-lost cousin who works at the hospital. She got a frantic call shortly after the baby arrived. They said, we're at St. David's Medical Center, and I said, I'm two floors above you while we're on the phone with each other. The peace of mind from that new connection allowed Sarah to focus on her new child. I literally, I wouldn't have survived. Around mid-morning, hospital staff transferred baby Austin to the flight team. Mother and son were driven to Executive Airport near Maynard, where there was little time for goodbyes. A chance for developing storms in the Mid-South threatened to ground the flight. So after loading up, the plane taxied away and in moments was airborne heading northeast toward home. Rudy Kosky, Fox 7 Austin News.